Hey, what's up guys? This is Anthony from Anthony's Customs, and for this review, we are looking at NECA's quarter-scale Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles Shredder from the live-action movie. And it's always very hard for me to get this first shot with these big guys. I just, there's no good way to do it. They're too damn big. But this thing is fantastic overall. I absolutely love it. There are definitely some things we're going to need to talk about. If you guys were following the development cycle of this guy, you know there was some stuff people were wondering about in terms of accuracy and, and quality and things like that. And I'm going to answer all the questions for you. There will be no debate left by the end of this review. We will have all of the answers and I'm going to provide them. So let's go ahead and get this guy off the stand and take a closer look. And this guy stands just about to the top of his hat. It's definitely a hat, by the way, and not a helmet or anything. Almost exactly 18 inches to the top of the hat. I know it doesn't look like it in camera. It is 18 inches. It's not what it looks like in the camera, which makes him about 46 centimeters, give or take, right around there. So scaling wise, well, he's the exact same thing as a, as a foot. Are they called foot soldiers? I think they were only called foot soldiers when they were robots in the cartoon. I don't know. Anyway, he's the same thing as this guy. Literally the same thing as this guy. Minus the colors and things. Like the main body. Not So not, not literally. You know what I meant. Now kiss. They are the same base figure. This was an awesome figure. We're going to set him aside. And so this it stands to reason that this one's going to be awesome as well. And so we always start these reviews off by doing a, uh, an analysis of the aesthetic. And that's what we're going to do. I will show you what he looks like up against the Ninja Turtle at the end in a photo. But um, if you saw the Foot Soldier, Foot Clan guy review, then you know the sizing anyway. So aesthetics on this guy. Well, first glance, they are astounding. They're fantastic. Really, really good. They did a great job with the red. The purpley reddish pinky thing here is just, it's gorgeous. It is shiny. It has the red and the purple and some highlights painted on there. And then we have some sparkles, literally sparkles on there. It gives the exact look. I mean, as much as with as re, as is reasonable for an action figure that they wanted. It looks stunning. It's great. The uh, waistband here is the right is the same color as the sculpted waistband, so you don't have that same issue that you had with the foot soldier. So that's really good. The armor parts they added on the forearms and the shoulders and the shins, very nicely done with the rivets and the brown painting. And then, and then we have the silver paint for, for all the blades and things. And it looked pretty much gray in a lot of the photos and people were freaking out that it wasn't silver. It is a flat metallic silver. You can see, look at the, look at the main part of the head. As I move it, you can see the light bouncing off of it. It is definitely metallic. It's really good. Is it chrome? No. Is it supposed to be? I don't think it is in the original. I'll have to check, but I'll, I'll, you'll see the images on the screen. A lot of people, the next thing we're going to address is the cape. We're really concerned about the cape. Partly because the first thing they showed for the cape looked like just a sheet of aluminum foil. And everybody was like, well, that's not right. And then they showed this, and everybody was like, I don't think that's right. But it is. This is as right as it can be. I don't know, because obviously it wasn't like I could just look up images of the actual material. But I don't know if it's supposed to be speckly like this is if you get in real close. I think that's just the result of them having to make something to kind of simulate what was in the movie. But this is about as good as you could possibly get. Maybe it is as good as you could possibly get. Not including the budget even. That's what I'm saying is this is like excellent. This looks exactly like what it looks like in the movie. It's really, really good. I mean, as far as scaling it down, you're not going to get better than this. It is fantastic. I want to take this cape off and wear it around my house. It's really good. I love the cape. I didn't think they were going to nail it, but they nailed it. So my confidence is, I guess it should have been higher, but it is really good. And another thing I like about this, I guess I could kind of include this in articulation, but it's not. They have some material in here. This stuff looks like dryer sheets. It's not. It is to give the poofiness of the cape the right poofiness so you can put it over his shoulders or tuck it behind just like in the movie it's really nice it is exactly as it should be it's great i love it it's awesome but now <laughs> soften him up then hit him in the gut now we have to talk about the head there's a couple things to talk about for the head so let me adjust the camera so we can actually see what we're doing <sighs> 
A few people were complaining about the face mask being too big. It's not. It was too big in the movie, so this is accurate. That is what it's supposed to look like. It's still fine. I mean, it, it, it looks like it does in the movie, and I, it never really bothered me. It is probably too big, but it, it still looks good. I mean, too big in the movie, even. But it's fine. This is accurate. No problems there. The mesh for the face that you can see through, also accurate. No problems there at all. That's fine. The design for the helmet, all overall little details and things, also very accurate. Here's, the, here's where we start to have a problem. These guys are not meant to curve down and around the chin. They're just not. There's no images of that in the movie. They are supposed to be straight out. They don't flare out. They're not supposed to be like this, like a standard samurai helmet, but they are supposed to go straight. And these do not go straight. Now you might be able to straighten them by heating them up, but it's also likely that that is part of the mold and that you will not actually be able to straighten those permanently. So that's definitely a bummer. And now here's the thing. I think the reason they have those curving in is because when you remove the face mask to reveal the face, and we'll talk about the face in a second, they don't want you to be able to see too far back. He doesn't have any ears. And they did that so that they could key this on, and I understand it, but I can't say I, I agree with that decision. Because not having ears and trying to hide them with this, I'm assuming that's what's going on, because that is f literally what's going on. I don't know if it was intentional or not. It's, uh, it's less than ideal, because you can see, like right now you can't because of the harsh lighting, but I can see in there and I can see the little tabs on his ears instead of his ears. So that's definitely less than ideal. I don't know how many people are going to display it without the face mask on anyway, so it's not a huge deal, but it is something to note. So these should be straight, that's maybe why they're not. And now the last thing we need to talk about. A lot of people were freaking out about the face. Some people were like, no, it's perfect. Well, no, <laughs> it is far from even close to perfect. The face is freaking weird, to put it, put it politely. It's not a bad sculpt if it wasn't trying to look like somebody. And we're gonna get to that in a second. It's like a, it's a nice sculpt in general. It just looks absolutely nothing like he did on camera. Zero percent, not at all. The, the scratch on the face is done well, it's painted well. He's got some stubble, I mean, like it's a good sculpt on its own right, don't get me wrong, but it looks zero like the actor. And here's the image of the actor on the screen, not even remotely close. The age looks different, the details of the face look different, it's not even a little bit right. So it leads me to wonder if somehow they didn't have rights to the actor's likeness, and so they did a generic look. And I'm not saying that like sarcastically as an insult. I'm saying that is maybe that is actually what happened, but it is definitely not accurate at all, even a little bit. So I don't know, that definitely bums me out. I wish it was, but it's not. But if we put this on, I can talk about the one last thing, which I could talk about without it being on too, but I want to put it on if I can get it to line up. There we go. So the last thing I want to talk about is just the eyes. They're looking up, which... I can tell from the camera, it looks like it doesn't look bad on camera, but they are like almost all the way up. Like he would have to be leaning his head all the way forward for them to be looking forward. They're very far up there. The eyes themselves are painted nicely, but they're looking almost straight up. So that's a little bit weird. So now we've established that the likeness is not right at all. Mostly everything else is, there are a couple issues, but now there should be nothing left for debate whether or not things are accurate. As far as I'm concerned, these are minor things because overall the figure is gorgeous and, and you, I'm gonna convey that as we go, I'm sure. I absolutely love it subjectively, but objectively, those are the good and bad things of the aesthetic. This figure is gorgeous in so many ways, objectively. Accurate, wonderful. It's not perfect, guys. Let's, let's be realistic here. It's not perfect. You saw it on screen for yourself. There's no room to argue about it anymore for anyone. So, aesthetics on this guy. The face is wrong. Everything else is really good except for the skin tone. For the most part, everything else is really good anyway. I'm gonna give it a nine. That's a strong rating. It's a high rating. I think everything else makes up for the lack of face being accurate. If you want it to be lower, you can do that. I've given you the individual details. You can give it your own rating if you like. Okay. 10 minutes in and we haven't gotten to the accessories. The accessories include his big toothpick, which is nicely done, no problems there. We do get his little knife, which is actually sculpted really well, and it has a nice little scabbard or sheath to go with it. 
We do have a fist hand for either side, a gripping hand for either side, and a wide open style posed hand for either side, and they swap out relatively easily, so that is good. You can remove his cape. So if you want to take the cape off, there's a clasp on it. It's right under the neck. It's hard to notice if you're not looking for it. You unclasp it. I didn't really want to do this, but I'm going to do it to show you guys, because I want to keep the cape on my guy, obviously. And it might be hard to get back on, I don't know. You do get to take the cape off. And so the cape does count as an accessory if you want it to. And of course, it's still just the foot soldier underneath, which means it's a good sculpt with a new collar piece. And it looks fine. Like, that's what Shredder looks like. So, cape is an accessory. All that's good. Accessory-wise, he could have more weapons, I guess, but he doesn't really need them, so I don't, I don't have a problem with it. So I'm going to say 8 out of 10, I guess. You know, it's fine. I don't, I don't think we need anything else. That's good. Time for the articulation. The head is on... It feels like a single, and then the neck is also on a ball peg. Yes, the neck is also on a ball peg. So, holy macaroni, Batman. Look at that. That's like the, the smoothest, creamiest, quarter-scale NECA figure neck we've ever seen. Holy crap, that is good. Was the foot soldier that good? I don't remember it being that way. It is nice. I really hate that these curve in. Changes the look. Like, that's mean looking. And when they're in, it's less mean looking. But whatever. These guys are just stuck onto these shoulders. So the arms still function completely fine underneath. Swivel hinges. All the range you would expect. Of course, rotation is going to be limited going up there. But it's the same as the foot soldier, so it's fine. You can still raise them up no problem. Far enough. No bicep swivel there. You get it down here at the elbow. It's a double swivel hinge. Let me move the camera so you can actually see what I'm doing. That would be better. So for the elbow, double swivel hinge. It'll rotate at the top and at the forearm. Though you won't really need to use this forearm too much because this is a separate piece. But double hinged elbow. Plenty of good range. No issue. That's fine. Wrists are obviously on a swivel because they peg in and they each have a hinge. Here's a problem though. The gripping hinges are not the right hinge. Holy crap, NECA's doing it too now. Stop taking after Hasbro. If you have a weapon like this, the hinge should be a vertical hinge so that you can lean the hand forward and back. Going like this with it doesn't make any sense at all. Why is that a thing? They've given us the proper hinges on the turtles. Why doesn't this guy have a proper hinge? I, I don't get that at all. That drives me absolutely freaking nuts. That hinge does not belong with a melee weapon. That's terrible. I don't like it. But it's not a deal breaker by any means. Torso is on a ball peg. Same as before. It's in the crotch area, so it's a little bit low. So it's not going to be like dynamically posed. There's no diaphragm joint at all. But it's still flexible and moves nicely. Works well enough. Hips. Ball hinge ratcheted hips. All the way out to the side. No issue at all. Nice ratchet. This one on mine, though, is loose. Let me know if you guys have that same issue. I mean, it's not like floppy loose, but the ratchet doesn't have as hard a click. It's not as heavy a ratchet. Going forward, heavier ratchet. Pretty much full range. No issues. That's awesome. Thigh swivel is fine. No problems there. Double jointed knee. We have a swivel hinge for the top knee. And then we have a... Uh, just a regular hinge. Just a regular hinge for the bottom knee. Range is superb. Wonderful. And then this is a swivelly floaty piece. Ankles are on a hinge, a swivel hinge, basically like your Marvel Legends. So you have the hinge going forward and back. Not the most range. It's enough, but you're not going to put one of these big guys in a crazy pose anyway. So it'll get the job done. It could be better, but if you force it, it's, it's pretty good. And then you get an ankle rocker out of that as well. So that's nice. Articulation on this guy, nine, eight, 8 out of 10 for a big guy. It's it's really good. But we could, we could do a little bit better with like a diaphragm joint. And I know they chose to not do that for the aesthetic. And that's fine. But it could be better on strictly an articulation-based rating system. So... 8 out of 10 for that. Oh, I want to mention for the uh, aesthetic, I didn't mention this. They do have some varied finishes for the wraps in here. So we have some gloss and some flat. So, very nice. Okay, time for the final verdict on this guy. I personally freaking love this figure. And it's my favorite quarter scale figure to date. Short of the turtles, I guess. It is great. Subjectively, I absolutely love it. Objectively, I still absolutely love it. The only thing that really bothers me is the face sculpt. Everything else I can live with for sure because it's really minor stuff. It's still really great, so I'm gonna give it a nine out of 10. Overall, you're gonna absolutely love this figure if you're in the market for it anyway, so get yourself one. 
you're going to be very happy with it. So there it is, guys. Thanks for watching. Make sure you subscribe to the channel. Give this video a thumbs up if you liked it. I do have new videos out almost every single day. Thousands of videos already on the channel. So make sure you come back for that good stuff. And in the meantime, keep collecting.